Did you know that the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was recorded in Antarctica? But what if I told you that beneath this hostile, frigid expanse, there might be traces of ancient civilizations? Sounds outlandish, doesn't it? But stick with me, because this icy mystery is a rabbit hole that goes deep into our past. Today we're going to delve into a world that is often overlooked in our discourse about ancient civilizations, the frozen continent of Antarctica. Now, Antarctica might be the last place you would think of when it comes to ancient civilizations. After all, it's the coldest, windiest and driest continent, a harsh landscape covered in ice up to a mile thick. It's seemingly inhospitable, an icy wilderness that is the definition of desolation. And yet, what if I told you that this freezing wasteland may have once been a bustling hub of ancient activity? Through the ages, Antarctica has been subject to a variety of hypotheses and theories. It has always been a source of mystery, partly due to its inaccessibility and the harsh conditions that make exploration a formidable challenge. Some theories suggest that this continent, now hidden beneath miles of ice, was once home to ancient civilizations that we can hardly imagine. These theories often hinge on controversial interpretations of satellite imagery, ancient maps and unique structures spotted under the ice, suggesting human or perhaps even non-human activity. One of the most famous pieces of evidence is the Piri Race map, a pre-modern world map compiled in 1513 by the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Race. Part of this map shows the northern part of Antarctica, ice-free, which has led to speculations about ancient maritime civilizations with advanced geographical knowledge. Critics, however, argue that the map is a compilation of multiple sources, some of which may have been flawed. Satellite imagery of Antarctica has also led to intrigue and speculation. In 2006, Google Earth users spotted a formation in Antarctica that looked uncannily like a face leading to suggestions of a lost civilization. Scientists, however, think that this is a natural phenomenon known as pareidolia, where the mind perceives a familiar pattern where none actually exists. The most provocative theories suggest that ancient alien civilizations could have once made their home on the icy continent, pointing towards supposed pyramid-like structures visible beneath the ice, though these claims are yet to find any substantial scientific backing. So, what is the truth? Is it possible that an ancient civilization could have once existed in this inhospitable landscape? Or are these theories the products of overactive imaginations and misinterpreted data? It's time for us to embark on a journey of exploration and discovery into the icy depths of Antarctica. We're all familiar with the mysteries of the ancient world, but Antarctica's mysteries are, well, colder and much more unusual. There are theories that take our understanding of ancient civilizations and flip it on its head, painting a picture of a past that is both startling and thought-provoking. Let's delve into some of these unconventional theories, each with its unique blend of mystery, speculation, and a dash of audaciousness. The first, and perhaps the most known, is the hypothesis that Antarctica is the lost continent of Atlantis. Proponents of this theory suggest that around 12,000 years ago, the entire continent was shifted from a temperate zone to the South Pole due to Earth's crust displacement, a controversial idea put forward by Charles Hapgood in the 1950s. This cataclysmic event, they suggest, froze the sophisticated Atlantean civilization in a matter of days, preserving it beneath the ice. But what about those pyramid-like structures I mentioned earlier? Some theorize that these are remnants of this ancient civilization. These structures, visible via satellite, bear an uncanny resemblance to the pyramids of Egypt and Central America. However, most scientists argue that these pyramid-like formations are likely the result of natural erosion and wind patterns unique to Antarctica. And then there's the theory of an ancient extraterrestrial outpost in Antarctica. It's been suggested that some of the unusual formations and anomalies found on the continent may be the remains of alien technology or structures. Proponents of this idea often cite supposed UFO sightings and unexplained phenomena in the region. But again, these claims have not found widespread acceptance in the scientific community. And let's not forget the speculation surrounding ancient maps, like the Piri Race and Orontius Phineas maps, which seem to depict the Antarctic coastline free of ice, 
suggesting that the cartographers had knowledge of the continent long before it was officially discovered. Skeptics, however, argue that these maps are based on guesswork and mistaken interpretations of other landmasses. The Piri race map has long been a subject of fascination among historians, cartographers and conspiracy theorists alike. Drawn in 1513 by Ottoman Admiral and cartographer Piri Race, this map illustrates parts of Europe, Africa, and the Americas with surprising accuracy for the time. But the intrigue doesn't stop there. The southernmost portion of the map seems to depict the northern coastline of Antarctica, a landmass not officially discovered until 1820. But how is that possible? Some proponents of unconventional theories suggest that the map is evidence of an advanced ancient civilization that had detailed geographical knowledge long before modern science. They argue that the Piri race map, along with other similar cartographic anomalies, proves that ancient mariners must have charted the Antarctic coast when it was free of ice, a situation that hasn't existed for over 34,000 years according to current scientific understanding. The details of the Piri race map are remarkable. It is said to include mountain ranges that were not discovered until the advent of modern seismic surveys and even features a detailed depiction of the Andean range in South America, which is surprisingly accurate for a 16th century map. However, skeptics caution against reading too much into these observations. They argue that the map's supposed depiction of Antarctica could be based on a misunderstanding of the South American coastline. As for the extraordinary detail, they suggest that this could be the result of synthesis from a variety of sources, some of which may have contained errors or embellishments. Despite the debate, one fact remains. The Piri Race map is an extraordinary piece of historical cartography. It offers a glimpse into the knowledge and skill of early 16th century navigators and the seafaring cultures that produced them. And although the debate around the Piri Race map and its implications for our understanding of ancient civilizations will likely continue, it undeniably continues to add a layer of mystery to that is Antarctica. As we continue to dig deeper into our past, we are left pondering what else is waiting to be discovered. As you might expect, the scientific community's perspective on the possibility of ancient civilizations in Antarctica is rooted in a careful analysis of available evidence and our current understanding of geology, climate history and human development. Firstly, Antarctica is and has been for millions of years the coldest, driest and windiest continent with temperatures that can drop below minus 80 degrees Celsius. Surviving in such conditions would be a monumental challenge for any civilization, ancient or modern. Thus, the idea of a long-lost society thriving in this frozen landscape seems unlikely. In terms of geology and climate history, our current understanding tells us that Antarctica has been covered in ice for about 34 million years. This was confirmed by ice cores drilled deep into the Antarctic ice sheet, which provide a record of past climates. This leads us to question, if Antarctica has been an icy wasteland for millions of years, how could an ancient civilization have existed there? Furthermore, the timeline of human evolution and migration also complicates the idea of an ancient Antarctic civilization. Modern humans are believed to have emerged around 300,000 years ago, and our ancestors began to migrate out of Africa about 70,000 years ago. But even if they could have reached Antarctica, the extreme conditions would have made survival virtually impossible. That said, the scientific community is not dismissive of all unconventional ideas. The Piri Race map, for instance, does raise interesting questions about the knowledge of ancient seafarers. However, uh, rather than attributing this to a lost civilization, most scientists would likely view it as a testament to the skill and knowledge of the historical societies that we already know about. Let's delve into the realm of the deepest human-made hole and consider the climatic history of Antarctica. The title for the deepest humans have drilled into the earth goes to the Kola Super Deep Borehole, located in Russia. This ambitious drilling project reached a staggering depth of about 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers before it was stopped in the early 1990s. Even this depth, however, is still less than 0.2% of the Earth's total radius. As for Antarctica, deep ice cores have been drilled, but these extend only a few kilometers down, providing a record of hundreds of thousands of years of Earth's climate history. This brings us to the climatic past of Antarctica. According to geologists, Antarctica has not always been the frozen land we know today. 
the continent was once part of the supercontinent Gondwana, which existed in the southern hemisphere millions of years ago. Fossil records indicate that Gondwana was home to a variety of plant and animal life, suggesting a much warmer climate. Around 180 million years ago, Gondwana started to break apart. Antarctica slowly moved to its present location over the South Pole, and by about 34 million years ago, the continent was rapidly cooling. This cooling trend culminated in the formation of a permanent ice sheet. However, while there were fluctuations in the extent of the ice cover due to global climate cycles, Antarctica has been largely icy for millions of years. There are indeed hypotheses suggesting that parts of Antarctica could have been ice-free and warmer during certain periods due to factors like geothermal heat and changes in Earth's orbit. However, these periods likely occurred millions of years ago, well before humans existed. Thus, while Antarctica may have once been a warmer, hospitable place, this would have been in a geological era far removed from the advent of human civilization. Despite this, the question of Antarctica's past and its secrets continue to captivate scientists and explorers, keeping the icy continent firmly in the realm of intriguing exploration. Have you ever wondered what's locked away in Earth's icy vaults? From the chilly steppes of Siberia to the frozen wastelands of Antarctica, ice has acted as a natural preservation chamber for ancient artifacts, mysterious beings, and even microorganisms that defy biology as we know it. Today, we delve into 10 fascinating discoveries found frozen in ice, revealing secrets about ancient civilizations, prehistoric creatures, and life in extreme conditions. From the Copper Age, Itzi Man, to Scythian gold, and even Antarctic microbes, get ready to chill out as we unearth the past and ponder the future, frozen in time. In 1991, two German hikers stumbled upon something absolutely chilling, literally. Meet Utzi the Iceman, a well-preserved natural mummy dating back to around 3300 BCE. Located in the Alps between Austria and Italy, this mummified human has opened up a new chapter in our understanding of Copper Age Europeans. But here's where things get intriguing. Utzi didn't just die, he was murdered. An arrowhead lodged in his shoulder coupled with other injuries indicate that his end was far from peaceful. And it wasn't just the weapons that were fascinating. His attire and belongings were equally eye-opening. From a copper axe to a flint-bladed dagger and even a quiver of arrows, Utzi was equipped for survival. Scientists even found traces of medicinal plants, suggesting an early form of healthcare or perhaps a rudimentary understanding of herbal medicine. And what about his last meal? An analysis of his stomach contents revealed that he ate a hearty diet of grains and meats. The implications of this are vast, it suggests a complex society where hunting and agriculture coexisted. It's like peering through a frosty window into a day in the life of someone who lived over 5,000 years ago. Now, if we think a human mummy is fascinating, let's talk about something that's truly gigantic. Woolly mammoths, the colossal cousins of our modern elephants, were found frozen in the Siberian permafrost. But what's astonishing is the state of preservation. We're talking about still having fur, skin, and even trunk intact. This isn't just paleontology, it's a prehistoric crime scene. Scientists have been able to conduct thorough autopsies, examining the contents of their stomachs and even analyzing their blood. Yes, blood from an animal that roamed the earth tens of thousands of years ago. And the findings are fascinating. They ate a diet rich in buttercups, hinting at the vegetation that once covered the frigid plains of ancient Siberia. These discoveries aren't just giving us glimpses into the past, they are fueling a modern-day debate about de-extinction. That's right, should we use this well-preserved DNA to bring the woolly mammoth back to life? The ethical and ecological questions are profound. Can or should extinct species be resurrected if human technology permits? The frozen carcasses of Siberian mammoths may very well hold the answer. The Otzi and the woolly mammoths serve as two compelling windows into worlds long gone, allowing us to touch, feel, and study our prehistoric past. It's as if the ice acts as a natural time capsule, locking away secrets just waiting for us to discover. And as we unearth these icy relics, we're reminded of our ever-evolving quest to understand our world and its history. Let's zoom out, way out, from the Earth and the Ice Age to the frigid void of outer space. We're talking about meteorites from beyond our planet, found frozen in the ice of Antarctica. Now don't get too excited. 
These aren't alien artifacts or spacecraft remnants. These are chunks of cosmic debris that have survived the fiery plunge through Earth's atmosphere and come to rest in the world's most remote freezer. The Antarctic ice sheet acts like a conveyor belt for these celestial objects. As meteorites crash land on the ice, they get embedded in the surface. Over time, they're transported by the flow of the glacier to regions where they become more accessible. Why is this important? Well, these frozen meteorites are like messages in a bottle from different corners of the solar system. Some even contain pre-solar grains, tiny bits older than our own sun. Finding meteorites in Antarctica is like a treasure hunt for scientists, providing them with invaluable materials for cosmic research. These extraterrestrial rocks have been teaching us about the composition of asteroids, moons, and even Mars. Talk about a long-distance education. All right, let's steer the conversation back towards Earth, but keep it ice cold. Imagine setting sail to discover the Northwest Passage, that elusive route through the Arctic Ocean, but instead finding your destiny sealed in a tomb of ice. That's the grim tale of the Franklin Expedition. Led by Sir John Franklin in 1845, this British voyage aimed to traverse the last unnavigated sections of the Arctic, but it went horribly wrong. Two ships, the HMS Erebus and HMS Terra, ominous names right, were caught in the ice and the crew were stranded. Despite a state-of-the-art ship design and provisions that included canned foods, a novelty back then, the expedition met a harrowing end. All 129 men perished and the ships vanished into the icy depths, only to be rediscovered over 150 years later. It's an eerie time capsule of mid-19th century naval life. Items found on the ship, frozen in time, include utensils, logbooks, and even the remains of some of the crew. These artifacts serve as a haunting reminder of the human cost of exploration, the perils that come with venturing into the unknown. Picture this, an ancient hunter prowls the icy landscape, eyes keen, bow in hand. This isn't a scene from a historical drama, it's real life, or it was around 5,000 years ago. In 2014, glacial archaeologists made a mind-blowing discovery in Norway's high mountains, an exceptionally well-preserved bow and arrows from the Neolithic era. Why is this cool? No pun intended. Well, you see, organic material like wood rarely survives the ravages of time. But thanks to Norway's icy conditions, the bow and arrows were nearly as good as the day they were crafted. The weaponry not only provides a look into ancient hunting practices, but also into the skill and knowledge that existed back then. Studies on the bow's construction have revealed a level of craftsmanship that is, frankly, astonishing. It's not just a primitive stick and string, it's a finely tuned instrument built for survival. The Vikings. When you think of them, what comes to mind? Long ships, helmets, and of course, weapons. You might picture them as rugged warriors of the past, but recent discoveries are making them feel much closer. In 2020, archaeologists digging in frozen lands once roamed by these Nordic adventurers uncovered a cache of Viking weapons. What's remarkable about these artifacts is their state of preservation, still deadly after all these years. Swords, shields, and even battle axes frozen in time but sharp enough to tell tales of valiant raids and epic sea journeys. These icy conditions acted like a vault, locking away the Vikings' tools of the trade until we were ready to appreciate them, and appreciate it as they give us a nuanced look into the Viking culture that goes beyond the stereotypes of barbaric invaders. These were people with skills in metallurgy, art, and navigation, not just pillaging. But what if I told you that frozen relics can also offer us a glimpse into the world before humans? In 2017, researchers made a remarkable discovery in Canada, a forest frozen in time, encapsulated in glacial ice for thousands of years. These aren't just twigs and leaves. We're talking about entire trees, roots and all, preserved as if in a gigantic freezer. The word forest might evoke thoughts of lush green landscapes, but this ancient ecosystem gives us an unparalleled look at life from a time when mastodons and saber-toothed tigers roamed the earth. What's particularly exciting is the diversity of species found in these icy deposits. Some of these plants and trees have no known living relatives. So this ancient frozen forest could not only reveal new species, but also shed light on climate and environmental conditions from millennia ago. How did these ecosystems function? What led to their downfall? The answers are frozen in time, waiting for us to thaw them out and delve into the mysteries they hold. 
And now let's pivot to something a bit more modern, but still equally mysterious. The airplane glacier. Imagine it's World War II. Aircraft are an indispensable part of military strategy, but they also carry the inherent risk of going missing. In Greenland, a US World War II um, was recently discovered, preserved in ice like a prehistoric insect in amber, nicknamed the Airplane Glacier. This site has become a focal point for historians and archaeologists alike. The plane seems to be almost perfectly preserved, a moment frozen in the chaos of war. Even personal items of the crew, like boots, jackets, and makeshift tools, were found on board. These artifacts offer an incredibly intimate look into the lives and final moments of the people on that fateful flight. But beyond the human story, the airplane glacier serves as a cautionary tale of the dangers lurking in the often unpredictable environment of our planet. The forces that preserved this plane also kept it hidden for nearly 80 years. But wait, there's more. How about a story that combines the chilly embrace of ice with the warm luster of gold? Enter the frozen tombs of Siberia, where Scythian gold artifacts have been unearthed in pristine condition. The Scythians, a nomadic people, roamed the steppes of Central Asia over 2,000 years ago. Known for their intricate gold work, they left no written records, which means much of what we know about them is gleaned from their surviving artifacts. Frozen for centuries, these tombs are a time capsule of wealth and ritual. We find ornate jewellery, weapons plated in gold, and even tattoos remarkably well preserved on mummified skin. This begs questions about craftsmanship and trade in an age when we assume things were more primitive. How did they source this much gold? What technologies did they use for such fine detailing? The icy preservation of these tombs allows archaeologists to study the Scythians' life and art with an unprecedented level of detail. We've talked about mammoths and men, but let's scale down a bit, way down to the microscopic level. The inhospitable climes of Antarctica are home to something unexpected, life. That's right, in one of the Earth's most extreme environments, scientists have discovered microbial life forms. These aren't your garden variety microbes, these are extremophiles, living organisms that exist in conditions once thought to be uninhabitable for life. For biologists, the existence of these microbes could have huge implications, not just for understanding the resilience of life on Earth, but also for the search for life elsewhere in the universe. If life can exist in the icy extremes of Antarctica, what does that mean for places like Mars or Europa, Jupiter's icy moon? The frozen lakes and ice sheets where these microbes are found may serve as earthly analogues for extraterrestrial environments. This opens a plethora of questions about the possibilities of life beyond our planet. And as always, I hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.